something. Well, printing cost. I wonder if I put this towards the camera, I'll get like an endorsement check. <laughs> Live? Okay. Let's do it. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. I'd like to call to order the uh, City Commission meeting for April 16th, 2024. Please join me, or uh, pardon. Uh, Lisa, can you please take a roll? Matthew Wells? Yes. Tim Van Hookie? Here. Melissa Guns? Here. Dylan Olson? Here. Tracy Dancer? Here. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Commissioner Wells, invocation. You will bow your heads. Lord God, on a, a day where we can just truly be thankful for some of your blessings, we want to honor you for a moment. With our voices, we just want to say thank you. Thank you for all that you do for us each and every day. Thank you for your blessings. Thank you for the rain the other day, and thank you for the rain that is coming. Thank you for taking care of us. Thank you for looking down on us and seeing us as someone who is worthy. We want to glorify you for that, Lord. This evening, we covet wisdom, Lord God. We ask that you would bless it unto us liberally. And we ask that you would guide us, give us direction. Speak into our hearts and minds and allow us to follow after you. We pray a blessing over this city. We pray a blessing over each and every person who comes and goes from this city. And we just ask, Lord God, that you continue to cover us with your blood. We pray for our first responders. We pray for our firemen, the police. We pray for the EMS. We pray for all those here at the city who serve our citizens each and every day. And we just ask, Lord God, that you give them sweet rest this evening. Allow them to raise up tomorrow with a new, fresh attitude and a willingness to go forth and to continue to take care of these wonderful people that live in our community. And we want to thank you for that, Lord God, for our community. We want to thank you for all of these people who have come together in this area and have decided that what is best for everyone is what's best for us. And the work that they do, those who go unnoticed each and every day, who continue to put their hands to the plow for you and for others, and do the work that needs to be done within our community, we thank you for them, Lord God, and we ask that you bless them. 
We ask that you bless those who will be giving of their time in the citywide cleanup, and we ask that you give protection over them and the ability to get as much done as they can. And Lord God, we ask that we will continue to honor you, and we ask that you continue to show us the way. In Jesus' holy and precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Commissioner Wells. Now, this evening we have a uh, we have a special item five. We have a proclamation. We have the recipient in the room. Okay. Now I, this is the first time doing this, so you know, city manager guide me. Okay. Yeah, it's a, it's a little uh, yeah, blindness inducing. Spencer Lee grew up in Fort Scott and attended Fort Scott High School, where he grew many friendships that have lasted throughout his young life. After graduating from high school, Lee moved to California to pursue a career in the music industry. Lee was a singer and songwriter known for his soulful voice and emotive songwriting. Lee hails from a musical family, with both of his parents having attended college on vocal scholarships. His musical influences span a wide range, from Justin Timberlake and John Mayer to Elvis Presley and Michael Jackson. Lee made his mark in the industry with songwriting credits for various TV shows and films, including Disney's Austin and Alley, The Descendants, Teen Beach Movie, and Planes, Fire and Rescue. In 2018, he gained significant attention with the release of his single, The Wolf, which was featured on the soundtrack of the movie Fifty Shades Freed. His unique blend of pop, R&B, and soul music has resonated with audiences, showcasing his talent as both a vocalist and a songwriter. Spencer Lee's soulful sound continued to captivate listeners, making him a rising star in the music scene. As well as a number of songs for various television networks, he co-wrote and performed a song for SeaWorld called One World. He released an EP of three original songs as well as one cover, all of which have been well received by a great multitude of fans. One song on his EP, Kissing Tree, was awarded by Spotify in 2022 for the number of times that song was downloaded in the first week of its release. Even with all of the success Spencer had during his career, he still called Fort Scott home and visited quite regularly. Spencer Lee sadly passed away on December 12, 2023, and will be missed by family, friends, and his many fans. Lee was 31 years old at the time of his passing. The city of Fort Scott would like to honor Spencer Lee with this proclamation and acknowledge April 27, 2024, which is Lee's birthday as Spencer Lee Day. Thank you for that. That was nice. Item six, the approval of the agenda. I have uh, two amendments. Um, under old business, we are taking off item number one, which is resolution number 12, 2024. And we are adding under action items, under new business, um, the uh, consideration of agreement number 20822. It's the um, cost share agreement. It was part of the, uh, the bid, uh, the KDOT project for Horton Street. Okay, so under old business, you're saying we're removing item number one? Correct. Re remove item number one, the resolution. Okay. Um, can I ask 
why it's being removed. I thought that the petitioners were coming back in here yes. this evening. Our uh, codes guys are off on training for this week. They'll be back in a couple weeks. I did talk to the owner of this property and they have a plan and they'll be back in two weeks to update us. They have gave they gave us some good news, so okay. feel good about that. In light of that, I will motion that we accept the agenda minus number one under old business and the addition of item number five two zero eight two two under the action items second tim van hookie yes melissa guns yes dylan olson yes matthew wells yes tracy dancer yes all right item seven the consent agenda does anybody have any questions Comments or concerns about the consent agenda? There are no questions. I motion we approve the consent agenda. Second. Melissa Guns? Yes. Dylan Olson? Yes. Matthew Wells? Yes. Tim Van Hookie? Yes. Tracy Dancer? Yes. Item eight, public comment. And we have, uh, we have anyone no, signed up? No public comment. No one signed up. Okay. So moving along fast. Item nine, appearances. And uh, again, for the sake of brevity and respect for the other people in the room, please uh, try to keep your appearances and comments to, uh, to 10 minutes. First person, Peyton Coyan, temporary street closure for the Luau event, May 18th, 2024, 10 a.m. to 11 p.m., North National to Oak, Market Street, North National to Old Fort Boulevard, to North Main and Old Fort Boulevard, alley entrance. Yes. Okay. So I am coming to you all tonight in regards to the Luau event that the City of Fort Scott will be hosting on May 18th, 2024. This event will not have alcohol sold on the premises. Our event will kick off at 8 a.m. with the Splash Pad and Farmer's Market. Our Splash Pad hours for the event will be from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. And around 11 a.m., you will start to see multiple vendors come in the area to start setting up the vendor booths that will include lemonade, popcorn, ice cream, snow cones, drug and alcohol awareness booths, temporary tattoos, face painting, hair tinsel, and even our very own special guest, Sparky the Fire Dog, which will be handing out free items to the first 100 kiddos. The vendors will be open for business from 1 p.m. to close of the event or until sold out, and music from the Beach Boys tribute band, Surfin', and Vinyl Revival will be st starting at 6.30 p.m. and will finish at 10.30 p.m. I'm asking that we do a temporary street closer for this event from 10 a.m. to 11 p.m. on Saturday, May 18th, 2024, and the area of the streets that need closed are included in your packet for your reference. Peyton, have you gotten any feedback from the businesses that might be affected by the st street closures? Um, so our hometown, which is going to be a business that is obviously going to be affected, they are perfectly fine with it. They actually are going to have a booth at the um, in, inside of the area. Um, and then Brick Street is 100% on board. They served on our committee and um, as well as New Girl. And everyone else is 100% on board with the event. We, Mary, Wyatt, and myself, we went downtown and spoke with each individual business to either um, get their approval or let the word be known about the event. Good job. And we've spoken to the Ford as well? Yes. Okay. I'll talk to Jill about do, this. Do okay. we need to approve a street closure for an event that we are hosting? So uh, I would, yeah, yeah. I would think we closure. would just okay. because of consistency. Yeah. Okay. So that's why I brought it. Plus, forward. we're restricting national. So, yeah. yep. I'll motion that we approve the street closures for the Luau event to be held on May 18th. Second. Dylan Olson. Yes. Matthew Wells. <laughs> yes. Tim Van Hookie. Yes. Melissa Guns. Yes. Tracy Dancer. Yes. 
Thank you, guys. I just also want to um, thank our sponsors. Um, so I'll hit 103.9, 98.3, and 1600 for being our platinum advertisement sponsor. And thank you for the donations from the following. Kel Nelson State Farm, Bourbon County Cars, Be the Light Boutique, Lions Realty, Papa Don's Pizza, Happy Kids Daycare, and Larry & Co. We hope to make this memorable event for all ages, and we invite everyone for a full day and night of family-friendly fun. Thank you, Peyton. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, number two, Sherry Walrod. Thank you, everyone. I'm here on behalf of Core Community, and um, so I think it was last summer sometime, the city um, had given some launch funds for Core Community, and I'm just here to give an update on that. It was our, kind of our ongoing commitment to transparency and accountability. I know sometimes folks ask, ask for funds and then disappear, and so we don't want to do that. We want to make sure you're updated constantly on what we're doing. So um, part of the reason I'm super excited about Core Community is my whole life has been dedicated to the um, issues around vulnerable children, having adopted many um, international orphans and looking at the, the plague we have on our society. Poverty is one of the root causes that causes children to be vulnerable in the first place. And part of the reason I love Core Community is it's a way to stabilize the family. And when the family is in a better place, then the kids are in a better place. And that's what's really, really exciting about it. So we officially started a program last um, November with a class of about 15 um, attendees that were willing to commit to a 20-week class. And we're now coming to the end of that class time, so on April 22nd. So next Monday night, April 22nd, at 6.30 p.m. at the First United Methodist Church, we're having our graduating class there. And we are. And so this is also an opportunity for me to invite the entire community to come out and hear the stories of transformed lives. I can't tell you all the stories tonight and go into all the details about how we do what we do, but it is an evidence-based program with um, measurable outcomes, and we're super excited about that. We're beginning to see now stories of these transformed lives, and we would love the entire community to come out and be um, and just witness that for yourself to see. And if you have more questions about how we do what we do, I'll be happy to speak to individuals or groups or um, churches or whatever. Um, so one of the two things that we focus on, there's two things we focus on primarily in core community, and that's helping families get the resources they need. If they're under-resourced in any way, then that can lead to poverty and lead to staying in poverty. So we help them get access to all those resources so that they can work themselves up and out of poverty. So it's not a handout program. It's not just throwing money at a program. We're actually very preventative. Um, I don't know why I didn't think of this before now, but it's like, why don't we build a fence at the top of the, of the cliff? Rathering, rather than continuing to mop a mess up at the bottom of the cliff. So we're building the fence at the top of the cliff and can do a lot of preventative things. And um, so one of the ways we um, build, so we work, focus on two things, and that's resources and relationships. And not just any relationship, we really want our families to understand what meaningful, healthy relationships are, because that's when people can change. People really only change in the presence of a meaningful, healthy relationship. So we work on that, and we do that primarily through a few ways. And one of those ways is that, are for so we do that with uh, meals, meetings, child care, coaching, and mentoring. So um, in our fast-paced society, many children don't have the opportunity anymore to sit around a family-style meal and have a meal with their families. And so we have a lot of engaged volunteers who come every single week. We meet Monday nights at 5.30, and we provide a meal for our families. But we also have our volunteers come in and the families themselves. So it's really neat and exciting to see the changes in our attendees, our participants, as well as the kids, that they're learning to come together in a community setting and sit around a table and have a meal together. That's, I don't know if I can, you know, most of us here probably get why that is so important, but it really is, it's exciting. And then the adults attend uh, a class and they started with this 20 week class, they're almost done with that. We have additional programming in phase two. And what's exciting about phase two is the participants get to help decide what they think they need to become better citizens, better workers, better neighbors, better parents. And so that's also, if, if we help them become better um, citizens, workers, neighbors, and parents, then that benefits all of us. Um, and so that's really exciting. And so in our child care program, which is where I volunteer a lot of the times, we're seeing a huge transformation in just those kids' lives. They're learning to interact and learn how to trust, and that's, that's also really exciting, that they have a safe space where they can have trusted, safe adults that they can learn from and also catch a vision for what their life could be like 
outside of poverty, just casting that vision for them. We also provide coaching, and that's our community coach is Janice Lamb, and she works day in and day out with her families. She provides them with just kind of a solid foundation of someone to bounce things off of. She is, you know, kind of a semi-retired. She has been a mom. She's a grandma and a great-grandma, but she's also very, very... She didn't fall off the turnip truck yesterday, okay? She understands and she knows, and so you also can't really, um, you know, pull one over on her either. She holds our attendees accountable, helps them make sure they're getting their classwork done, and also just helps them in their day-to-day -day lives if they have questions and need those resources. Sometimes it's hard to find and you need to know where you need to go. And then finally, um, we do mentoring, and that's where we're getting ready to enter in this space too. So if anybody in the community is interested in being a core friend, uh, which is kind of like a mentorship, we would love to talk to you because we have a lot of our um, core participants that are looking for another person that they can trust in the community to help them find the resources. It's not a hand-holding exercise, and it's not a big uh, time commitment. So that's, you know, we can talk to you more about that, what that means. It's just being a friend to somebody and maybe meeting at the park and letting the kids play for an hour or going out to coffee or whatever. Um, and then um, the other thing is, while we did receive, you know, some initial funding, primarily the core communities um, are in existence and have been operational in 15 other Kansas counties for a number of years. And primarily they are privately funded, not 100% necessarily. They don't typically rely on a lot of government grants or government funding or things like that. That tend, tends to be a little more unstable. And so we really rely uh, primarily on privately funding individuals, churches, and businesses who look at what we're doing and say the best investment they can make is in the lives of people in their community, specifically these kids. That's really where it is for me. I mean, yes, we're helping adults, but primarily if the adults in the situation are 25% better and then their kids are 25% better and then their kids, it takes a good three generations to really move up and out of poverty, like generational poverty for good. So some of our families we're seeing are, you know, transitional poverty, but also generational. So we're really helping to change the mindset, and it is working. So from an economic standpoint in the community, it's probably one of the best investments you can make is helping these people get stabilized so that they can help, you know, contribute to society um, by spending money in the community and paying taxes rather than being a drain on it. So to me, it's a great investment. And so anybody in the community that is interested in what we're doing, I would love to speak to you more about that because um, it just, it really does pay long-term financial dividends. Um, we have metrics that we can look at and go by, and the other core communities in other counties see about a 70% life improvement rate from the participants that go through the program. And so while it's not perfect, it's really the best thing we've got. And again, it, because it is preventative and it is good for everyone in the community to invest in, it just really helps these people become more productive members of our society. So um, we're offering, uh, we provide hope and help and healing for struggling families, which enables them and empowers them to move up and out of poverty. And um, there's a lot more to it, but we're really, really excited. So next Monday night, April 22nd, 6.30 p.m. at the Methodist Church. Anybody's welcome. I know they're also having that cleanup that night, and I really wanted to get involved in that and have our participants involved. We can't do both at the same night, but I would love to invite everybody. After you're done with the cleanup, it doesn't matter if you're not dressed up. It's not that fancy. We just want you there. We want you to hear these stories from these participants right out of their, their testimonies from their own mouths. It's super exciting. So um, do you guys have any questions for me? Okay. So um, again, come and hear the stories of transformed lives. Thank you for your support. And I wish I had time to go into all their stories because it really, really is very neat and exciting. So Sorry, could you tell me again how many are graduating? So we started with 15 individuals. And the last count I know, we're for sure having 11 graduate. And the reason two of them aren't graduating is because they basically graduated early. Oh. Their lives are stabilized and they're working so much they can't attend every Monday night. So that's actually a good thing, right? And another one may not, because we require them to attend a specific number of classes and complete a specific amount of classwork in order to get the certificate. Now, they can always stay in the program and always come anytime. They can be part of phase two. They can be part of the mentorship program. We have kind of guardrails on the actual graduation, if you will. But for two people to have, in a very short period of time, had a complete train wreck happen in their lives, it was a health, out, you know, a health crisis and then jobs loss and then vehicle loss and then home loss, almost homelessness, 
didn't have up-to-date driver's licenses. Janice helped them get all of that lined out so they both could get jobs. They don't have children at home, so they're able to work swing shifts and make more money. So they just don't have the time to be there at class every time. But um, the gentleman, I met him a couple weeks ago. At, he saw me at Walmart. And he's like, oh, my gosh, tell my story. Okay, this is so exciting. Um, they paid off a bunch of debt. They were able to buy their first car with cash. Actually, we've had two of our participants buy cars with cash just in the last couple of months. Now, I don't know about anybody else, but that's pretty impressive, right? So, And that's the other thing I like to point out. Even if they can't necessarily work up into higher-paying jobs, they learn how to avoid debt traps, specifically predatory lending practices, mm -hmm. and they would really put some of us to shame, myself included, paying off debt. And if they free up two to five hundred dollars a month, then that's they essentially gave themselves a raise, a tax-free raise, which then they can use to put back into the community. The kids are involved in more sports activities and more outside activities. They can do 4-H, they can do FFA, they can do um, you know, all the extracurricular activities, which is really important for kids to be involved in that, especially to step outside of something they've never, ever had access to and never known, to be able to have an access to those. That's another thing that's, that's a huge improvement. We're super excited about that, for, especially for the kids, to have those opportunities. Thank you, Sherry. Thank you. Mayor, uh, I have a add-on to the agenda. It was my mistake, oh. Bailey Lyons is here to talk needs to, she needs to leave here pretty quick okay if we could add her it would have been under public oh, comments yeah it, okay oh well, under public comment yeah it's for the cleanup day she said it'd be really oh. quick that oh. was my fault. okay that was my fault Sorry. okay you can buy me a donut or buy, buy everyone a donut one day yeah. okay i'll do yeah. it all right. Sorry about that. I was supposed to speak up during public comments. Uh, Bailey okay. Lyons from the Downtown Chamber Division and John Crane, same division. Um, we just wanted to make everyone aware of the uh, Downtown Cleanup, which is going to be held on Earth Day. This is our third cleanup event that we have hosted um, since we've been on the Downtown Committee uh, starting four years ago or so. Um, <laughs> And we just want to thank the city for your support. This one conveniently falls on Earth Day, so it's a great time to get um, all the citizens out to help beautify our downtown just before the city luau, good old days, uh, summer tourist season. So uh, some of the projects that we have slated and have volunteers for are painting the light poles, weeding and multi mulching multiple beds throughout downtown, numbering the parking spaces at the pavilion, general cleanup of the streets and alleys, sprucing up the retaining wall by the Ellis Center and Don Woods moving, the gazebo area cleanup, repairing and repainting, repainting benches and tables on scubits, window washing on vacant buildings, and a lot of planting thanks to the garden club and we will pair them with um, uh, ready and willing volunteers. Uh, we need to give a few thank yous. We received a grant that funds the majority of this through the Elks Lodge. They have given us that grant all three years that we have um, done the cleanup. Good Neighbor Action Team has supported the efforts and Bourbon County Arts Council. And then of course the city of Fort Scott. It is from four to six on Monday. Um, we will kick off outside of my office, but kind of between John and I's office there. Um, I'm at 8 East Wall, and um, the first 150 volunteers will get a free t-shirt thanks to my one stop. And we ask that everybody be there probably by like 345 at the latest so that we can get you pointed in the right direction. The volunteers will have all the materials and everything organized and ready to go. We will already have assigned everyone who has told us they're volunteering a specific project. Um, and then we'll send everybody out. Um, HBCAT is donating 500 bottled water, so we'll have those going around to volunteers. And um, the work will be from four to six. And at six o'clock, all the volunteers will be fed under the pavilion. And that um, is a combined effort, kind of like a community potluck, thanks to Sharky's hometown, Papadon's Common Ground. Um, they are all pooling in to feed all of our volunteers. So um, did I forget anything, John? Nope. Uh would like to thank the city again for what the, some of the materials they provided, which we really needed the mulch, uh, the paint, uh, the deck paint to put on the uh, benches and tables and stuff. But one thing we could use more of, and it'd be nice, and I think it'd be nice to have some 
representation from the city is uh, volunteers from uh, those here and uh, even others to work for the city. If you could, you know, uh, kind sign of me encourage, up. You can encourage. As long that. as we don't have a meeting or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, Bailey, is that the is that the shirt this year? Nope, this is the shirt from the very first one we did, ah, I think. Um, okay. I had multiple. I was the shirt lady. Um, I saved a few. Um, no, this was the first year. The second year was that royal blue one that had the downtown cleanup in the circle. And this year, they'll be blue and yellow, and um, they're super neat. So, um, anyway. I'm waiting on purple. Wrong team. <laughs> um, I, uh, if if any of you would like to volunteer, anybody in the audience, anybody watching, uh, the general public, if you would please let me know as soon as possible. We are meeting almost daily this week to try to appropriately divvy up projects to groups, um, the community college, um, athletics, and and a lot of employees from the community college are sending a lot of people. We have a lot of our civic groups in town sending people, and we have the most volunteers we've ever had out it, it has grown all three years but um right when we put it out this year we had a ton of people reach out and just individuals that said they wanted to be a part of it which i think is just testament to the community morale and that people want to be involved so we would love to have any of you just please let me know because we like to be uber organized so it goes off without a hitch and um, while we welcome you to come last minute if we know you're coming in advance we will be able to plan better so Okay. 620-224-7795. Or most okay. of you know where to find me. All right. Thank you. And, and thank a really you. quick it, tools. Oh, uh, some of the things we are needing supplies that will help us. Uh, flat blade shovels or hose. Uh, scoop shovels or large dust pans uh, to pick stuff up with. Uh, let's see. Uh, oh, shears. pruning shears, uh, brooms, whether it be push brooms or regular sweep brooms, okay. uh, leaf rakes. Uh, if you have any of those items, um, they can be, even if you're not going to volunteer, they can be dropped off at my office. We just ask that you like duct tape it and put your name on it so that we can make sure to get everything back to you. Um, so anybody from the general public, if you want to help but you're not able to help that day, it would be a huge help. We have, I think... 10 teams slated to, 10 to hit 10 to 12, 10 to teams, 12 yep. group teams slated to work their way up and down every alleyway to hit like the curbs and gutters and all of those things. Um, and so that's primarily why we need the bulk of those tools so that we can put a, a set of tools in the hand of each of those 10 to 12 um, teams and have everything ready to hand them when they check in. All right. So, all right. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you, you again, Bailey, guys. All right, so third appearance tonight. Uh, Scott Christensen, Jamie Whitney, and Casey Brown from Bourbon County Transportation, or is that Bourbon? BB Go Transportation. BB Go Transportation, correct. Okay. Uh, my name is Scott Christensen. I am the Director of Transportation at CCAP. We're headquartered in Girard. In conjunction with the Bourbon County Action Team, uh, in late August of 2023, we started the BB Go Transportation. It's a general public transportation route that runs throughout Bourbon County. Um, I think, did everybody get in their packets our uh, information and statistics? Yes. I do have some extra copies if somebody wants to follow along. Um, sure. During the seven months that we've been uh, running transportation in Bourbon County, we run three days a week. We start approximately between 7.30 and 8 o'clock in the morning, and we run till 3, 3.30 in the afternoon. We can flex that a little bit depending on if somebody needs to get to work or get home from school or something like that. But uh, three days a week for the last seven months, we've moved 628 passengers. Those are amazing numbers for a new route, uh, three days a week. Uh, we have a lot of good regulars. And um, most of those are general public, meaning they're under the, under the age of 55. And uh, most of those, it's pretty much split half and half between uh, taking people to grocery stores, 
laundromat, that kind of stuff, and uh, medical needs. So we do have a lot of uh, medical. Um, CHC is, is a big one that we drop people off at. Um, that's, that's pretty much the biggest. CHC and Walmart are where people are going. And uh, we're bringing people from all over the county, and we're bringing those folks to Fort Scott. We're, uh, Mapleton, we have a good solid, uh, some regulars in Mapleton that ride, and Uniontown also. And we bring them to Fort Scott. They're spending their money at Walmart, uh, Dollar General, places like that. And um, a little bit in Bronson. We do uh, try to fill up our vehicles locally. We've spent uh, almost $900 in fuel in that seven months in, the Bur in Bourbon County. And uh, just in March, we started running radio ads on uh, the local radio station here. And right now, we're about $350 a month. We're paying for that. We're going to be um, starting some newspaper ads here shortly, too. So it's a great program. Um, we are funded currently through June 30th. So uh, we will be looking for uh, funds to run from July 1st, 2024, through June 30th, 2025. And I do have a uh, sheet with a funding request. So if, if I can pass that around and let you all take a look at it. Our current schedule is three days a week. We, um, the total cost for that is a little over $37,000. We receive 70% of that through uh, DOT, federal, FAA, and, and DOT funds. So uh, what we're looking for is 30% uh, local match. We're asking uh, City of Fort Scott to uh, consider uh, $4,500 for funding for the for the upcoming year. Uh, we are also approaching uh, the county, and uh, if there's any more funds available from the Bourbon County Action Team, we're, we're looking into that too. We also had, uh, this is a flyer that we print around the county when we started. We had Peerless, Southeast Kansas Mental Health, and Community Christian Church were also partners. And if we pick up other partners who want to contribute, we're going we're gonna to build a new flyer with logos. We'll put logos all over this thing if we get people throwing in money to help us go. We're looking, the current schedule is $9,826 is what we're looking for. If we raise enough funds to go beyond that, we will look at going to a five-day-a-week schedule. So, Questions? Or? Sure. Actually, you have on here the uh, reason for ride education. Is that for, for students or for educators? Actually, no. Actually, we picked up a few high school students um, huh. and took them home from, from school. Um, that was kind of a, a kind of kind of two or three different kind of one-offs that, um, for whatever reason, they didn't have a ride home that day, and, and they called us and scheduled a ride, and we took them home. So yeah, we haven't we haven't done a lot of that. We've uh, um, had con a couple conversations with the community college about uh, some kind of student uh, transportation system, but we haven't quite been able to materialize that yet. So um, that's something we'll certainly look into uh, should the program continue beyond June thirtieth. Okay. In the next uh, year. Yeah. The only other question I had was that uh, the single largest reason for ride is at 45% uh, other. Uh -huh. 
Um, yeah. What, that, that's I was Wal looking at that too. Yeah, what, that's Walmart. That's um, uh, uh, DFC, DMV. Um, here's a breakdown of, of all our most popular sites. And, and some of it is, uh, you know, people going from, uh, uh, maybe, maybe you're going over to your sister's house to spend the afternoon uh, sitting on the porch and you need a ride over there and you need a ride home. So, okay, so we, the didn't people we didn't list any private residents, but. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just, you know, so anybody who's going to Walmart or DCF or anything like that for employment is included in the employment. Employment okay. is, yeah, and we don't do a lot of employment, but uh, we do a lot of uh, general public, and it's it's basically, Walmart's the, the driver, and when, when we're bringing somebody from Uniontown, if they want to sit on a bus for 20 minutes to, to get their groceries, we're, we're more than happy to bring them, so. Maple Would you food. say a lot of it at Walmart's for groceries? Yeah, Probably. for the most part, yeah. yeah. Now, it's hard to keep, you know, it's hard to keep a gallon of ice cream uh, on a 20-minute trip, but uh, people, people manage. They, they, um, some of them bring insulated coolers, that kind of stuff, if they know they're going to be buying a gallon of milk or something like that. But, yeah, people, people plan ahead. And, um, I just wanted to add. This is probably one of our programs that is very focused on community development and enhancement of our yeah. economic development when it comes to programming. Um, again, obviously the funding that we receive is locally based um, along with state and federal money that we get, but it gets people to work, keeps them from getting socially isolated and brings them into the community. Obviously, Fort Scott is going to be the draw in your county, and they do come here. So that's another thing that, that keeps the elderly as well as the disabled and or younger people <laughs> Since uh, coming on board myself for the last two years, this one has exploded. We were in two counties just doing general public, and now we're going towards six. Right. So, and a lot of communities have saw saw the um, interest in this program and seen the difference. Cherokee was our first, um, and then we've gone on to try to get the community to invest more money in individuals and local businesses to put money into it. So, it does make an impact. Like I say, we're 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 buying fuel in Bourbon County, and we're spending money on the radio in the radio station in Fort Scott. So that money that that you know, that money that the city puts toward it, not only are you tripling the value of that because we're getting seventy percent other funds, but a lot of that money is going right back into the city of Fort Scott because our drivers are either spending it here or we're bringing people here to uh, spend money at the grocery stores and that kind of thing. So we hope you consider. Uh, when your when your budget comes around, we hope you consider including us in in that budget. So, can I ask a couple questions? Sure. Um, there's no fees to use your transportation if it's a citizen. Great question. No, we we don't charge. Uh, that's that's why we ask for the local match. Um, we don't we don't have any kind of restrictions on income, medical, age, none of that. Your car breaks down, you need to take it to the shop, we'll come pick you up at the shop and take you to work. At the end of the day, we'll take you, pick you up back at work and take you to the shop to pick up your car. Anybody can ride for basically any reason. We don't haul sick animals or anything like that, but um, there's no restrictions on who can ride. It's free of charge, we do take donations, and the, any of that donation that we receive offsets what we get reimbursed from KDOT, so we don't, we don't gain anything by taking donations. So since Walmart is one of your big ones here, are they on your list of sponsors? We're, we're looking into that, and uh, yep. I think, uh, you, yep, he's, he's our community engagement coordinator, and we, we are talking to Walmart, yes. So uh, the last question, I think we have two other services in Fort Scott. Mm -hmm. It's kind of, especially the one that goes to CHC, because I know they have a, a free busing service. Yeah, so I, I wonder why you have so many for that. I'll just. Actually, with CHC, we, we partner with, we, well, I wouldn't say we partner with them, but we hear from CHC every day. 
their service is at capacity. They do primarily, and I don't want to speak for them, so, if, you know, but uh, they pr do primarily uh, medical reimbursement type transportation, and it's primarily uh, their own uh, people or, or uh, patients that either going to and from a clinic or going to follow-ups at another doctor or going to a pharmacy or that kind of thing. And they are booked, and they call us Every day that we're here, we get a phone call, can you fit a passenger in? And if we have the, cap the capacity to fit that passenger in, absolutely, we pick that pass passenger up at CHC and we take them home. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. All right. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. All right. Okay. Ah, we have a fourth appearance. Dan Stryler and Corey Breyers. Good evening. Um, I'm Diane Stryler, as you said, and Corey Breyers. Um, thank you, Hi. Mayor and Commissioners, for letting us come back again. Um, at our last meeting, um, we had a request for us to come up with an MOU, which would be um, a memorandum of understanding what the city's part would be involved in the skating rink and what ours would be. So um, I believe you all have a copy of this. Does anybody have any questions for us? Well, I guess my only question or concern on it would be right now, again, you know, I, I do like that it says that the, you know, the city won't have responsibility for it, but who were you looking at for TBD on there? I mean, I know that, um, we had been asked to provide some suggestions, mm -hmm. and one of the ones I had brought up was possibly the Chamber of Commerce taking responsibility for it. Did right. you reach out to those folks? We did, but um, so we're actually talking to a couple different groups, but they really want to make see if this is what, I mean, to get this passed. So there are a couple groups that we are talking to, but. Um, okay, is the Chamber one of them? Yes, we have talked to them, but and, and they've declined or we are we were working on a chamber foundation board. So um, that was kind of quick. We have the chamber dinner this Thursday. So we're working really hard to get yeah. that done. So sure. we've got a lot going on. I know personally myself, I'm working on making a couple of barrels. And so we're all just really busy right now. To me, one of the, I mean, to me, that sounded like a great idea because I mean, the list of businesses that you brought in here saying that they all supported yeah. it are all members of the chamber. Yeah, majority of them are, yeah. Majority of yeah. members of the chamber, yeah. so it seemed like a natural fit. Yeah. yeah. And they've already got experience handling money, giving tickets out for the right. trolley, things like that. Yeah, so we have talked to them, but we, um, and there's someone else we're also talking to, but we needed to get this. Can you see, <laughs> can you say who the other person is that you're talking to? Um, I think that's what, I mean, we've talked to, yeah. I, I think my understanding is they were wanting to get this a little closer to what they could work from to come back in and say, yeah, we could do that. I guess we've been doing all the back and forth. Yeah. Okay. So all commissioners have had a chance to review this MOU as it stands. <clears throat> Would anyone entertain a motion? to approve or accept the MOU in its current state. I would motion that we accept the MOU in its current state. Second. Dylan Olson? No. Matthew Wells? Yes. Tim Van Hookie? No, and I'm not saying I'm against it, but again, we're talking about who is, who is TBD, and I did discuss it with our attorney, and have we ever done an MOU before under the premise of a TBD on the other side of it, Bob? No, we have not. Okay, if we can find out who that TBD is, mm -hmm. I got no problem on voting on it again. I don't have that many issues or anything with what's in the content of it but I'm not going to vote yes on a TBD. That's why I okay. tried to get the suggestion forward to right. you about the chamber. and. Yeah, so that. are you comfortable with what it says for the city to do? Uh, well, according we, to this, the city is not 
tearing it down or putting it up or right. banning it or maintaining it or buying the shed We're, for it. Yeah. We need to proceed with the vote. Oh, sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry. Melissa Guns? Yes. Tracy Dancer? No. Okay, so you need to know who TBD is. Yeah, I just feel it's kind of like a blank check saying, sure, mm -hmm. here's a memo of understanding for whoever. My biggest okay. concern for this to be successful yes. is that people move, people change jobs, no, I understand people that. have, yep. it, and an established organization like the chamber is always going to have people there. They're long standing in the community. Right. And the whole reason the idea popped in my head was the number of people that were on that list that supported right. this. Yeah. Now, they can do or find whoever they want to run it, right. but we at least have an established entity within the city right. that, would, that okay. would be in charge of it. Okay. But there are no other issues that you all have other than the TBD? Well, I think well, I won't Commissioner Olson, uh, withstanding, yes, sir. Yeah. I understand. Yeah, I, mean, I mean, I don't think any other group's going to come in here and ask the pavilion to be partially shut down for mm -hmm. three or four months. Every year for 15 years? Okay. Yeah, and we we, so, kind of, we adjusted that to 10 weeks. Well, yeah. they need to know that, though. No, no, it, I, even I, if they change the T, yeah. that, whatever that yes. thing is, yeah. are you good with the location? If it's managed and maintained by that organization, and it's an organization that we can comfortably put on the heading of, you know, that to me, part of what we're looking at here is, is compromise and concerns we've heard from people about... Right. Yeah. Don't want it, don't want it. Mm -hmm. But to me, I think that takes a lot of the fears away from the city and the abandonment clause that you put in there as well. If right. this thing is just sitting there taking up space for two weeks and nobody's using it, we can consider it abandoned. Right. And is, then, is an MOU a legal document? Because I've heard it said at these meetings before, no, and you not. can't enforce it. Hey, hey, Bob, Bob, what is your, <laughs> is a MOU a legal document? <laughs> an MOU can be a legal document. If there are contractual things in here, offer, acceptance, mm -hmm. and consideration. Well, the biggest so, thing to me if is... those three are met, it's a contract. Well, That's and the what big, they always taught us in school. Yeah, the, the biggest part of that to me is, is one reason I, I do like some of the language in here is that there's an out. Right, I mean, if, if one year, yes, you know, if yeah. we, there's if, an out, so if there's a snowstorm or like blizzard and we can't use it, we can put it away till next year. You know I mean? That's reasonable, yes. but I mean, if the thing sits there for three weeks yeah. and nobody's working it, nobody's on it, nobody's right. maintaining it, yes. So, in the spirit of compromise, if we can get an established organization like the chamber to say, you know right. what, we'll take it, yeah, we'll hire the person, we'll manage it, we'll set it up, we'll tear it down. To me, the compromise is sure, a few weeks under the pavilion for that piece, I would be good with that. Okay, okay. And I am doing, I have some ideas of doing some other things down. I know some people are concerned about the areas down here for business and some of the things I was thinking of moving some things down in the I think, areas. I think the verbiage that I'm hung up on is that it, it stipulates things that the city will do, when, where, and how. Mm -hmm. And TBD is responsible for arranging things to be done. Mm -hmm. Not for actually doing them, just That's arranging. Them well, the, the arranging was is if we did have, like, for instance, we and we before we're talking to like. Understand, but yeah. you know, if if it's the specific verbiage that we're talking about, mm -hmm. that's the hangup. I personally, I don't think it's good policy to be half in, half out. Either the city should do it and do it the whole thing, or this group should be fully responsible for this, and we allow the pavilion closure. That's my point of view. Well, I also believe in public-private partnerships. I think that's how you get a lot done around your city. So I disagree respectfully with you on that This one. is a little bit more than a public-private partnership because you're taking partial okay. possible city resources. Well, maybe we can answer a question on that, Commissioner Olson. Under item three, where you says TBD will make arrangements for the rink to be set up and torn down. Yeah. Is that by the... People that are TBD, or well, part, is that by well, city employees? Well, I, I know that I'm going to be involved. No, not city employees, but I'm like I've had several people come to me that have said that they would volunteer and help do it. Um, and so, no, that is not for the city. That is, but I mean, even though there's a group that may be running it, we still may get some volunteers to help put it up. Sure. Okay. That's I think. Well, the bullet before that says the city shall retain ownership. 
but the city shall not have permission to sell the rink. So, right. I mean, unless that's, that's half in, half Un out. Unless it's abandoned. Unless it's abandoned. Unless it's as abandoned. long as it's abandoned. being used and it's being, yeah, if, of course, if it's, it's abandoned purpose. for, for yeah. two weeks. For two weeks. Yeah, if it's abandoned for two weeks or if there's no one to run it and the organization fails, then there's a clause in there that says we can sell it. And or we can rent it for two weeks to another city and make $20,000. Because that's the current rental rate yeah. on a rink that size is $20,000 for two weekends. So I guess at, at this point, as far as I'm concerned, and I don't know, I mean, it, it did not pass the vote. But I mean, if we can, if you want to tell us who TBD is, then I would be open myself to, to reconsidering it again. I think the motion is, uh, yeah, it's motion carried. Yeah. What do you mean? I'm no. saying that. The motion, the motion died. It died. Yeah. There were, it failed. It yeah. failed the vote. Yeah, yeah. Unless, yeah, yeah. And we're not prepared to release TBD yet. Well, we're meeting yeah. with him, so I don't. Want, you know what I mean? I yes, ma'am. Yeah. If at this yeah. point you're not Understood. ready to, okay. you know, disclose TBD, then I thank you for your time. Okay. okay. Right. Okay. And can, can everything else. Is, one until next time. Was, <laughs> can I ask for clarification of one comment that was in the discussion? Yes, sir. Yes, go ahead. So I heard uh, Commissioner Olson state that all in or not. That one of the First options that we actually wanted was the city to operate. Is that what you meant by that? Or I'm not saying I support that. I'm just saying my view is it shouldn't be this mis, uh, mesh of back and forth where you control it or we own it, but you you have the say of what we do with it. You know, one if, of the plan was to work together. I mean, I think, yeah. I think the verbiage says that we work together. So I, I, I just want to clarify that very specifically that the ownership versus the right to sell is where you were coming from not potentially no, wanting to operate in my view just like if someone else came in here and said we want the pavilion for a month this isn't a good standard to set for one group and not the next whereas if you came in here and said look we had a rink we're paying for the insurance we have the invent insurance we'd like to close the pavilion for two months that's a group asking the city to close something whereas this is a mix of it's city property but we're not going to be able to move it even if five of us say we want to move it without your group giving us permission even though it's kind of fallen under a city umbrella that's kind of a slippery slope there dylan because we have a whole group of people coming in next monday sure. to do work or all around town on city properties that we own and there's no there, slippery slope. I mean, know, we, we contract out services all the time. Yeah, yeah. yeah it, as as we, we do. A, it's a contracted MOU. service. And but, to me, to me, the chamber is not just somebody or an entity that we don't know. Right, but none of those contracted services tell us how they're going to do the work we hire them to do. Well, but we're also allowing volunteers to come in and do what they want with downtown too. Without don't get me started on the volunteers. Them. So, I mean, I, I don't understand quite and, what and this the big deal is hired. with working with citizens to have things accomplished that are good for our city. I, I understand what Commissioner Olson is saying. I understand his, his point of view. We can disagree on it, but I, I understand exactly what you're saying. So I just agree that what's the best interest for our downtown, what's good for our citizens, and something that is going to increase the economic viability of a lot of businesses garners the support of everyone that I've been fortunate to talk to about it, every business that's reached out to me, every citizen that's reached out to me, they are all 100% behind it. So, Elisa, is the, uh, is the current MOU, you know, in its present state, is it accessible by the public? No. Okay. Um, can it be added <coughs> to the uh, minutes when it's posted? Absolutely. <coughs> and then Brad? Um, one other thing on here, do we know what this would do to our annual liability insurance? $1,200 a year. Oops, sorry. It'll add $1,200 So about year. $400 a month I, for three I, months? Yeah, we, we pay a monthly, so yeah, whatever. Okay. I don't have any other questions for now other than TBD and can you get the chamber to do it? Like I said, I'm willing to compromise on the location. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Good on. Thank you. All right, item 10, old business. Uh, moving straight to vacate Old Ford Street. 
tabled from April 2nd, 2024 for further information. Do we have a party here to speak on that? There you go. The, the further information was, was provided, so the clarity was instead of 60 by 120 square feet, it's actually yeah. 60 by 150 square feet. So instead of it being 7,500 feet, we're actually being asked to vacate 9,000 9, square feet. Um, there are several other properties around town where our codes department has allowed individuals to build either in an alleyway or on the edge of a street. There's one less than two blocks from City Hall where the codes department gave permission to a homeowner to build their garage in the alleyway. Mm -hmm. um, so this is not the first time that, that we've dealt with this. This is, from my understanding, the first time we're being asked to vacate this massive amount of property mm -hmm. as a result of our codes department giving permission to somebody to build in an alley or a streetway. That's essentially with, two, two lots, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. Um, the other properties, they just allowed them to build and then gave them that little piece of property that they built on when the mistake was noticed. Um, there was other suggestions made about ways to handle this. Um, I'm perfectly fine with the other suggestions that were made by other commissioners on how to handle it if that's the way we want to go. I'm still okay with giving them the piece of property where their house is built on, but to give up 9,000 square feet to an two city blocks worth of property well, over. Well, it's not, well, not city, city property, blocks, it's public it's... right of way or easement. Right. So, I mean, you're no, not going to go out and sell a road even though it's not there. I That's, guess the thing that yeah, concern, concerns me the land. most is, you know, is, is precedent. Mm -hmm. and, yeah, I so, and I understand parts of I'm, this was our codes team giving the go-ahead, but. Yep. I'm going to. If I may, I'd like to float an idea by you. Um, yeah, my first question to you was, did you conduct a stake survey? And you, you said, no, we, we, we thought we owned it. Yeah, well, said, right. you guys <laughs> you guys no, 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 you, your response Has was, no. Has anyone we, looked we, at this we thought, property? We thought we owned it. Because I've went and yeah. looked at right? it. Yeah. So This is um, a heavily forested. Yes, it is. And the next right 100 below, years, there right will likely never be so a road if, there. If I may. Please, sir. All right. Um, if you were to pay for a stake survey and we were to pay for an assessment, an appraisal for the land that your, your house occupies, right? And uh, now, Bob, uh, Brad, tell me if this is doable, if it's not in the realm of doable, just let me know, right? Um, if we gave that land to the land bank, and they paid the appraised value for the land, they could then legitimately purchase that land from the land bank, and that money would go into the land bank, correct? Only thing that I think, having had served on the first land bank board that was in here that comes about is mm -hmm. you put property in the land bank, there's a time frame that that property has to be made available to everybody in the public. And the highest bidder. And the highest bidder. You can't put it okay. in there it without goes the risk bid? of. Yes. Well, if let's say it doesn't necessarily even bid, people come in and we, make we, an offer on it and they have to explain what they're going to do with it. Right. But it has to be advertised that it's available and that would allow anybody to come in and say, guess what, I want to buy that and I'm going to put this there. And now it's at the land bank's discretion mm -hmm. as far as the decision they make to go with it. But I okay. think it does put a small amount of risk there I, for somebody to just... I've never heard of vacating a street to or a roundabout way of selling well, what we, would be a street rather than vacating. I mean, if we, if, if the land, you know... If the if the survey came back and said, "Hey, look, you know, this, these are the this is the location, your your house is taking up X amount of it, plus you know setbacks for easements and stuff," um, could could we not transfer the that property to the land bank, and then the the city's not on the hook and we're not. No. Well, well yeah. again, I'll. 
here's here's one of the problems. Okay. It's called contributory negligence. It's just mm -hmm. a con it's a contract term. Mm -hmm. Okay. We contributed to the negligence that's happened here. Oh yeah, yeah. That's why. So we, so why we don't we pay to oh. have it repotted <laughs> and from the corner of their house ten feet into that property? That way we still mm -hmm. have the rest of the property as a road, but we're giving them enough that it's covering their property. No, because I mean, that, that's you're, my you're, question. You're, you're, on, you're on taking our... the words out of my mouth is that the cleanest way is to handle it at this table right here. No land bank, no extra or whatever, because it gets bigger, more complex, and maybe not even doable, which would be to the disadvantage of the people that we have put in a position that they're in, we've yeah. helped with that, should I say. And, and, and my, my question still goes back to the simple fact of whatever we do, we're setting a precedence. And so that I means don't... that this gentleman two blocks away here can ask us to vacate that alley and give him the whole alleyway. The gentleman over there can ask us to vacate that alley and give him that alleyway. Because our codes guys told him they could build that building two feet into the city alleyway. So now if, if we go through with this, then we're setting a precedence that allows this to take place. And yeah, but the, the other issues is that we're dealing precedence with. Precedence is not binding. No, I don't, I don't think it's so from the standpoint, because I'd like to think. You should legally be, within the court of law, they use precedence all the time. Well, I know, but I'd well, like. Well, that's different. <laughs> I'd, I'd like to think that with what has happened mm -hmm. and the awareness of codes, this should not be a future issue. I would think not. Well, well no, no, I don't yeah, see it being a future issue. Talking, I we're... see past issues coming back and people using this Except those, to the, those to folks grab extra land. The, those folks have already had exceptions made that yeah. allowed their project to happen. Okay, well, you know, it's a if, whole different. If going forward, we required a uh, stake, a stake survey. survey for a building permit. I mean, for I, new construction that would, for new construction. Well, I think mm -hmm. we do. Yeah, I think mm -hmm. that's, that's the rule. Is that? Right it was now. yeah. It was the rule at that time. Our codes department, unfortunately, was unaware of the rules that they were enforcing, and they gave them permission oh. to go ahead and build the house, okay. thinking it was their property. Yeah, the two problems I have is one is they gave me permission to go down. I always thought yeah. it was our, mm -hmm. if it was your guys' property, I mowed it for years. Mm -hmm. Why didn't anybody come mow it is my point. No. I don't know. Nobody I'm, came and mowed it. And he, ma he makes a good point is he was told it was his. Mm -hmm. These yeah. others... These others yeah, have never been told yeah, these were his. Yeah. 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 Well, and there's enough, the, there's enough property, from what I've seen, that you could essentially move the easement over, yeah. replat there so that their property extends 10 feet from I mean, their there, house. There isn't yes. even a road there, right? No, there's not. There's nothing but there, there. But there's, yeah. if, if the concern is that we're giving up that much and we're going to give up that, you know, unplatted whatever street or whatever we're going to call it, then there's still the space to do that if we hold on to the some of that property and we just extend I mean, it 10 feet away from the You said you were only alerted by the county, right? Yeah, because yeah, no they had to come through yeah. a county appraisal on it. Okay. But the, the only thing that when she talks about doing the pad thing, we, the neighbor, which lives down the street, she has, so she, we go up to the, what were you guys are used to, mm -hmm. to the woods, mm -hmm. and hers would be the back. Well, yeah. See, it's, it's, it's mostly woods back there, yeah. and there's a creek runs down through the bottom of it. No, and, and if giving them the piece of land that our codes department made the mistake and allowed them to build the house on is one right. thing. Giving them 9,000 additional square feet because of that, that's, that's where the delineation needs to take place. The rest of that... Seven right. thousand or eight thousand nine hundred and whatever square feet. If they want to buy that and we want to figure out a way to do that, Which that's one thing. It's not all ours. I wish it was. Okay. It wouldn't be all right. ours. It'd still be half that lady. She won't pay for it. Right. So I mean, if it's if we're if if we're only talking about the land that your house is on, so that, plus a setback, um, that that's one thing. But if we're asking, you know, if the ask is, hey, give us two free lots. That's, I think, where the hang-up is, right? Because at least a couple of us are concerned about setting a precedent. And we're dealing with a situation in several other locations in town and with what we're dealing with out at the lake. And this, this situation will 
I promise you, this will be the Why? situation that everyone but, uses to come and attack us with. Right. The difference that's, is that's the that they were given permission by the city to do it. Those other places yep. were no, not, not given all of permission. Them. Some of them were given permission see, by our codes department my, as well. My plan was up to them. Yes. Then. Yes, but and but. But had you conducted a stake survey, you would know that it wasn't. Bob, what's, so, what is your, with your legalese, what is your, do we need to reach out to maybe somebody that's got more specialized um, property law, give them the example, what's been done in the past, what's the easiest resolution on this? I don't think that's going to do you any good because every situation is fact specific. Sure, sure. We have a qualifying factor here that we told them it was okay. I understand, but I also see the other point as well. You know, no, and, and giving them the piece of land that the house was built on, built on. that our codes gave them permission. Yeah, that's a non sequitur. And I don't think they have it's a problem with all it. of the additional property. I don't think you have a problem with us giving you the land that your house is on and just leave it go and you're good to go and you can cut the trees and work with the neighbor and life goes on. I know what you mean. I don't own Yes, what I mean. I think... I can get some landscaping done behind my house and as long as you guys are okay with that and the lady's okay with the trees... Yeah, he just wants to make sure his house is okay. Yeah, I don't think, yeah. I don't and, think there's any immediate yeah. threat yes, that and, anybody's yeah. going to go out there and bulldoze the portion of your house off that's on the city we'll property. Right <laughs> yeah. But what, what we're trying to figure out is what's, what's yeah. the best way, believe it or not, for you, but also to make sure that it's in fairness for everybody else. So, yeah, it, yeah. so yeah. it, can we... Can we plot out that? Can we plot, plot that out and then... Because that we have precedence for. We've we done that three times out at the lake. We've plotted out the area where yeah. the structure was built. And yeah, you, you're yeah. just going to have to get a survey to describe legally what that right. is so we can give you a <laughs> quick claim deed to it. Exactly. Just on that part. Yeah. Is everything else we no, no, we're not talking yeah. about the rest of it. Yes. Yeah. Yes. We're yeah. talking about just what the house yeah. occupies. Yes. Well, yeah. right. Wh that, why? that is an easy yes answer. That's yes. not a problem. Absolutely. Right. Well, just that requires replotting that lot, though, right? Oh, I think you don't have to go through a whole plat to to do this. Just okay. have a deed. well, having a survey in hand oh, would make I'm, it yeah. easier. You have to a plot. survey in hand. You have a deed. Right. We're giving up part of the. Public right away, yeah. and we're just. I, I away. still feel like if we're, we're going to yeah, pay. And to he's not, and he's not worried about at this point title insurance, or whatever, because they right. built the house. I think we should be responsible for paying for that, for them to come in and. So. Because the house is thirty-seven by eighty. Actually. I so know. I just want to point something out, some discussion that happened. You know, the idea for it to go to the land bank, well, the land bank just last night gave away a, a parcel bigger than this one for $500 to not be built on. And they give away the same parcels for $500 mm -hmm. a, or less if a contractor will build on them. Oh, yeah. So here we have a resident who built accidentally with city approval so was this one they gave away not being built on? It had what, no clear title, but... Was it adjacent? Was it attached to their existing yes. property? Mm -hmm. Okay, that's... So I just want to give an example. You know, I think this is a bigger deal than it's being made out to be because the precedent is what we vote. Yeah. And, yeah. Mm -hmm. and I don't see this specific area ever being used for anything myself. They should, <laughs> according, uh, yeah, according, according to, according to the, yeah, according to the codes that we have, they shouldn't have given you the permit until you had a survey done, and there should have been a GIS pulled, and they should have clarified the lines. There's a whole set of things that should have been done. Should have happened. Yes, a very hard lesson to learn. Yeah. 
So Dylan, are you are, we, are you okay with? I'm okay this with as vacating is? the whole thing myself, and I will make the motion to vacate. I believe it's 60 by 150 <clears throat> of Old Fort Street. I second that. Matthew Wells? No. Tim Van Hookie? Boy, I'm going to have to say no to the whole thing. Melissa Guns? Yes. Dylan Olson? Yes. Tracy Dancer? No. So the next step let's would get the house plotted. Let's get the house plotted. Yeah, get, yeah. Let's get that piece of land too, so that you don't have to worry about any of that. And then we can deal with all the rest of it in another day and continue to, to figure out a path forward. Well, then I, I would move that we as a city take responsibility and pay for the cost of having that. I survey. would agree with that. For the survey? For the survey. And how much did you think it was? Well, uh, at our, our current rate with our engineer, it's like $1,700. Yeah, it won't be too bad. I hope we get 500 for the parcel. <laughs> <laughs> Was that a motion you yes. were making? Yeah, I motion that we pay the, the cost of having the survey completed for them since it's our, since our fault. We were contributed. We Seconded. contributed to that. So, yeah. Just get it. Just get it to the city and we'll get you the deed. They'll yeah. have to yeah, vote yeah. on it. We can do a quick claims deed yeah. so on it. Then, then, then that means the house part would be covered. Yes, yeah. the house part would be covered. I mean, it would still be a Yours. right of way and a city easement. Yep. You can do whatever you want with it for right now. Just don't and build anything just, on it. Just yeah, don't, don't, build, don't build anything <laughs> on it. <laughs> yes. Back. No, we don't. Yeah. But we're not yes, going to be upset if you landscape it. Uh, well, I'd, that yeah. Yeah, yeah I just, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't be able to. You would not. The way the current ordinance is written, you can't build a, a porch, a fence, a overhang, over the city easement. It has to maintain a public right of way. But their lot should be. So how well, many? Well, you're not supposed to build within like 30 feet, feet of yeah, the city. Yeah, there has to be so. a. Whatever we give with them the, has to be include setback. the house plus yep. plus that yeah. twenty five feet <laughs> yeah. additional. I would think so. Yeah, to cover you know the legalities of how far from the city line. Mm, so not necessarily. We we grandfathered in a ton of buildings and fences and everything that's built in the city right yeah, away. But, but, yeah, but I mean, when, you're, we're, when okay. you're giving in the we're land, if we're going to so, so give them I, the land give that them. the house sits on, we give them the 25 So I would feet, move. Yeah. We, the, have, the, the, we, we currently have a motion. Okay, on well, I wanted from, to oh. add to your addendum, your motion, okay. um, that the footprint of the house plus 30 feet be on the back that of the house. That would be about the whole width of it because it's yeah, already about it's a it's already about 20 feet into the easement their house is already yeah 20 oh feet right feet. yeah yes i went by your yeah. property i need to it's look at nice the map again. so yeah if you had if we add on to that you're already 10 feet away from okay. the other parcel anyway okay so. well how many feet do you think is fair so he can put a porch on this thing <laughs> oh, wait, or a landscape i mean I'm, I'm concerned about the house and the easement. That's, you know, I mean, the, or the yeah. setback from the easement. Yeah. Mm -hmm. no. Okay, well, then no. I'll leave your motion as it is, and I'll second it that the city pays for the survey. So you're striking that and seconding her motion? No, I'm seconding her motion. I'm just taking out the part I wanted added to it. Yes. Okay. Tim Van Hookie? Yes. Melissa Guns? Yes. Dylan Olson? Yes. Matthew Wells? Yes. Tracy Dance? Yes. Scott, I'll get Norm to uh, get with you and we'll get somebody to come out and do the survey. Yep. Nobody wants to tear down your house or anything. No, we we want to make we, this. We want to yeah. make this. <laughs> <laughs> no. I, I would, but I heard I would, but I heard part of it's on city property. So. <laughs> yeah, we And I think the boss has already said he's mm -hmm. not going to say So Technically, yes, we would have to work it out with our city codes and have a variance yeah. put in place, but yes, yes, yeah, yep, yeah. 
A yeah. pond. Oh, yeah. Yeah, right. just, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, and just just again, the important thing right now is is don't worry. Nobody's gonna yeah, no one's gonna give your you house down or jack it up yeah, and move right. it. Your or house anything. is safe. We just need to make sure at this table that we do it the right way, that's fair and doesn't set a precedent that other stuff yeah. happens. Yeah. And I think this lesson learned regarding making sure there's a stake survey before a build. Just oh, sir, we'll take care of it. We'll, yeah, we'll yeah, that's what, that's what that's what we voted on. Yeah. We're yeah. gonna yeah. we're gonna yeah. take care of the survey for you. Yeah. Since it was our codes department that made the mistake, we'll we'll get that done for you. And then you'll be in contact with Peter Norm Williams. Norm Williams. Yes, sir. And You're welcome. You. God bless you guys. All right, old business item ten three. Uh, the what do we call this thing? Uh, discussion of the tourism uh, grant. event sponsorship. <laughs> grant program we've talked about this in the past i think you've seen it all um one line that is on page four or five it's the last paragraph second to last paragraph uh final reimbursement amount will be based upon the standardized rubric grading matrix any submitted event or project receipts and invoices and supporting documentation and contingent upon City manager's final approval. All event sponsorship grants must meet all requirement upon completion of any event or project under this grant. Reimbursement could be in the form of in-kind services, monetary funding, or advertisement. This is discretion of city management. And the rest is all pretty much the same as what you have seen before. Okay, question on here, and maybe it's because I had my shots in my eyes today did we put a range in there what a person could request the max, in other words a max dollar amount. the max is five thousand yep. at least okay what page was that on because i absolutely missed it when i looked at this last weekend today it's a So I helped at the time this, to put this together, and I it's never come up since I've been on here. So I didn't put a range in there because I didn't know what the commission's range would want to be. Well, in the past, I think the highest has been 5,000. Yeah. That's why I just wanted to make sure. I think that'd be important to put what that max is, include that in the document. You'll see in the next two weeks how we're doing our tourism um, and a lot of it's going to be through commercials it's going to be through advertisement it's also going to be reaching out to more of the Kansas City area to get more people into town and in my point of view that's more important than giving cash to people yeah you know when somebody comes in and asks for five thousand dollars to help them support their their event will the event not go on if they don't get that <coughs> I mean, that, that would be a question but we could help them with one in-kind service if they need it and two advertisement to get them more people to their events yeah. and i'll give you an example was uh this past weekend that wrestling was blown up with the advertisement Mm -hmm. and there was almost 600 people there yeah so it was free also so. Yeah. so with this then someone fills the form out who evaluates the rubik's then community development you i do in tourism i've got myself community development and tourism and then since this falls under your purview of what you can approve do you approve it or yes. do we get to see the final oh well, you're i'm going to tell you about it yes for okay sure. i mean i, I, I would hold, like i would I like hold anything from you yeah i would like like even if you go ahead and approve it if mm -hmm. it could just be a quick agenda item that was on here That's and, fine. and yeah. these forms that you had not all of them that explains it but just the rubik's and the evaluation and what it is could be included yeah. in the packet for review i think no, that would fine. be good so are you requesting then that the max of 5,000 be included in the document? I would that's move, very easy. I would move yeah. to approve 
with two items. Number one, that the max is $5,000. And number two, that the Rubik's evaluation sheet that's done by city staff, by tourism and Brad, um, be a line item on future agendas and are included in our packet so we can at least see what it went to. Not that we don't trust him, but it would be nice to be familiar with what's going on. I, I do have one question on this, though. Since these are <coughs> transient guest tax dollars, are we setting a budget limit of how much of this we want to come out of that? You That's know. why most of it's going to be through advertisement and in-kind yeah. service because you'll see it we have spent a lot of money on tourism from the guest tax through advertising for our community let's just let's just say gordon parks celebration you can run a 30 second commercial 15 seconds is gordon parks 15 seconds is our town so you're you're doing both at one time for that money now of course commercials are expensive but you're advertising more than just that event. Um, so you're using your transient guest tax for more than just that event. Yeah, which is fine with me. I just, I don't want us to set something up where I, we see someone gets $5,000 and then $10,000 left to be spent. I don't know. Money's going to be pretty yeah. tough to yeah. come by. Yeah. I think we're trying to get away. Matter of fact, I yeah. can tell you. Um, a lot of the folks understand that a good old days committee is not coming in here asking for a yeah. dime this year. It's the biggest festival we have. It's not coming in here asking for a dime. They will come in here and request in-kind services, barricades, mm -hmm. so on and so forth. But I think it, it, it is good that with something like this, we're starting to wean away from just giving out. You can't hands. help every single person right. that comes in here. We right. have other obligations to infrastructure in the city. So, And the one thing that, to remember, our, our city is – not not city of Fort Scott, but as a whole, yep. is very good about helping events. Yep. You know, our businesses get hit mm -hmm. on all the time, and somehow they keep giving, and that that's what we live in. It's very special that they do that. Yep. So, Lisa, did the commissioner make a motion? Yes. Okay. I would second that motion that we accept it with that verbiage of the max of five thousand in the added agenda item. Melissa Guns? Yes. Dylan Olson? Yes. Matthew Wells? Yes. Tim Van Hookie? Yes. Tracy Dancer? Yes. Okay. By Number the way, 11. Brad, good, good job you and Dylan on putting that together. Well, I like it is it. Matthew's to start They did with. most of it. Okay. I just added a line or two. He made it look good. Thank you. He, he yeah. it. Okay. <laughs> good job, Matthew. Good job, Matthew. <laughs> Good team effort. All right. Melissa didn't tell you good job, though. I think she doesn't like you. <laughs> no, I like that. I, mean, I requested the, uh, like a stronger rubric, so I was glad yeah. to see that. <laughs> okay. All right. Hey, public hearings. Uh, new business. New business yeah. Did we add something or did that later? That's at the end of the yeah. action yeah. items. Yeah. Okay. We need a motion to open the yeah, I moved, have, uh, moved to open the uh, public hearing for case number 1045 zoning change C2 to R2. Second. Dylan Olson? Yes. Melissa Guns? Yes. Tim Van Hookie? Yes. Matthew Wells? Yes. Tracy Dancer? Yes. <coughs> okay, do we have, uh, is Jason Marbury in the, in the crowd tonight? Mm -hmm. No. Okay, um, but uh, is, this, is this what you showed me on the on the map? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we'll have to talk to him about that. But okay. basically, what they're going to ask is: uh, Is there anybody here to contest it? You guys all been apprised? Do we? Want yes, one, yes. We, we need to ask the public. Is is there anyone here anybody this evening here? who wanted to speak on this? It's a public hearing. Now's your opportunity. If you had any. No, we were just Oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Yep, gotcha. One item that we do need to look at yeah. is, uh, I don't know if, you, if we should make this public. 
Well, well, if there's no one to I, speak, do you want to close the public hearing? Yeah, yeah let's yeah, do that can, first. Move to close the public hearing. We have a motion to close public hearing. Second. Okay. Dylan Olson? Yes. Melissa Guns? Yes. Tim Van Hookie? Yes. Matthew Wells? Yes. Tracy Dancer? Yes. I think you can do this without naming well, names of property. <laughs> I would recommend just, if you're, if you're going to approve the zoning change, mm -hmm. This doesn't even play a role. This is up to, to them, actually. This, isn't, this really isn't up to us. So, Bob, you're aware of this as well? Yeah, I would agree with, with Brad. It's a land use is the only thing that's in front of you. Yeah. It, yeah. There, it well. appears that there are some mechanical issues, structural issues, that, uh, that the developer is going to have to figure out what to do with. Or he'll well, they're going to have to talk to the adjacent property owner. Exactly. Right and work that out. So as far as what the zoning commission has approved, if you look at the properties that are <coughs> to the west of where the proposed item is, that's it's all already residential, it's, right? it's residential already. Mm -hmm. So I would move now there's a, uh, a oh, go ahead. There, yeah. Now the other side of the street that's not on this map to the south um, there's a I believe that's the Elks Lodge. Yeah, there's the, there's Elks Lodge, there's uh, Rogers, oh, Body, Rogers shop. Body Shop, uh, the Alignment Shop, and that uh, oh, a little further to the east there's that uh, Salvage Reckoning Service, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So that's all that's all commercial, yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, Brad, did you say that road there, the the one that's running north south uh, from the Theater that is that? Just that is not problem. a city road. No. Okay, uh, that's well, what part of it is. No, it's it's this built part. within a city right of way. Well, there's no name to that road. But that that there was a plat. Yeah, that's okay. South Crawford. Half half of it is built within the city right of way. So Bob, you were around when this happened, but uh, it's my understanding that the city paved that parking lot. And the road, right? Yes. I mean, it connects uh, part of economic development. Eighteenth and nineteenth. The county provided the asphalt, oh, and we, we provided the equipment. Okay. Mm. I mean, but we can mm. approve the rezoning of it. And since the road is not owned by us, it's going to come down to the negotiation between one landowner and the other. Yeah, the yeah, road's going to have like to that. be made right <laughs> at some yeah. point in time. Here. I mean, there's not something and we they, should have to come back to later other than, to Commissioner Wells' point, I mean, the, on other properties there is such a thing as a no, right I mean, of way to reach your property. Right. And, and, I don't know where the right of way well, is. Now this, it's not on this map here. No, it's so you, you have a lot of like a, those issues that I don't know if you can even address tonight. Well, I because you either rezone it or you don't. Well, I mean, right. well, this, this half like half of the road for vacating. Yeah, from a hundred from from a hundred and uh, or from Nineteenth Street over to behind the Elks Lodge, that is City Road. It's in the city right of way. It's an extension of what was Crawford. For some reason, that section oh. from there behind the Elks Lodge to where the theater was, a previous city commission vacated Crawford. Even though the road was built there, they vacated Crawford and gave that property to the people that were building the theater, gotcha. thus creating that particular issue right there of that one little, it's like less than 100 and some feet of the yeah. roadway is built on what was Crawford Street, but was vacated by a previous city commission and given to the people that built the theater. The rest of the roadway from that line on is built on Crawford Street and is the city road. Huh. The C Street vacates happen. Yes, and they create oh, yeah. tons of yeah, issues creates, down the line. Creates yeah. city these discussions. <laughs> yes. Almost every time that I've seen a road vacated has created issues. Just thought I'd tease okay, you. So, I mean, at this point, the case be the case before us is just changing the zoning. Zone. Just, yes, right. yeah, just yeah, right. the zoning. Of the dirt. Of the dirt. So, yeah. I, I would move that we approve with the Planning Commission's uh, approval and recommendation 
that we uh, approve the request uh, for the zoning change C2 to R2 in case number 1045. Second. Melissa Guns? Yes. Tim Van Hook? Yes. Matthew Wells? Yes. Dylan Olson? Yes. Tracy Dancer? Yes. All right. So all business B action items. One, consideration of purchase. Two, new Teledyne ozone analyzers. Teledyne API M465H, $15,120. Scott Flater. Scott Flater. Every time he comes in here, his hand is out. <laughs> I don't let him come in too much. I'm, I'm glad you don't. Know. <laughs> that better. Okay, so you have it before you. Yep. Uh, you guys, do you have any questions? It's pretty straightforward. I'll go ahead and, I mean, unless anyone has any questions, I'll motion that we approve the purchase of the two Teledyne ozone analyzers. Seconded. Tim Van Hookie? Yes. Matthew Wells? Yes. Dylan Olson? Yes. Melissa Guns? Yes. Tracy Dancer? Yes. I'm sorry you had to miss your prayer time for that. That's okay. <laughs> uh, I just wanted to update you guys on some stuff while I was here. I, I appreciate that. Thank you. That'd be great. We need it because, yeah. Anyway, uh, so update on uh, a couple of things at the water plant. Uh, we got the. Uh, on April 2nd, we got the number three high service pump in that we put in for last May. Finally got that installed on April the 2nd. So that's good. Uh, so we're, we're back up to snuff on three high service pumps. Um, I don't know if I'll come back in this year, but maybe, maybe next year we can rebuild pump number two. Um, so we have that done, and then down at the wastewater plant, uh, well, you can see by your um, agenda, uh, we finished with the phase two on the aeration for the uh, lagoon system. So everything's running really well down there with that. And then on the uh, grit removal system, uh, we have the company has come in, uh, Ray Lindsay, is the engineering company and uh, anyway they've come in removed the old grit system they had to cut it out piece by piece and you know that that's the thing that's been taking a, a long time um, we're hope to have it up and running by I think he said May so hopefully everything will be done and installed and in place by May so Scott how are our Testing of our, the loads and, and the test on the wastewater treatment facility with the shipments that we've been getting from our contracted customer. Yeah, they're 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 good. Um, we're staying right around right now anyway. Um, that twenty loads uh, per What's week. What's the pH average? Uh, it's above seven, so it's it's between seven and eight, but above seven, okay. and you know seven's neutral, yeah. so. Uh, that's good. Um, we're also, well, we had a meeting last week, uh, uh, a team's meeting, Brad and myself and Alec met with ADM and just, just to kind of go over things and talk about uh, the future and how things are going. Right now, for the last couple of months, we've been doing really well. All of our uh, laboratory testing's coming back <laughs> in good shape. So we're not, you know, we don't have any, uh, uh, it's not really a compliance issue. The things that we are required to comply with, we do. What um, other things, like with the lagoons, yeah. uh, <clears throat> are things that are being watched, but it's not as far as a compliance issue. And are they, they still taking steps? that they're advising you guys of on what they're doing on their end before it comes over here to help mitigate what we had before. Right, and they're still working on that over there. Okay. Um, they're working on an aeration system oh, themselves yep. on their lagoons over there. Oh, great. Um, so that's, 
I, really being beneficial uh, to the quality of the loads that are coming back over here. You know, it's they're still not down to the point where um, the I don't know what you'd call it the the premium or the penalty for being within contract limits need to be. They're still not there yet, but it's something that they're they're totally aware of and totally working with. And they realize that you know Fort Scott, the wastewater plant, Fort Scott's been carrying the heavy load for the last couple of years, and they appreciate that and recognize that. Is it's, AMS still out there as well? AMS is still there. Um, and we talked about them, you know, uh, right now, uh, ADM is footing the bill for AMS to be there and injecting their uh, microbes into the lagoon systems. And uh, we talked about, you know, it, for well, for right now, we had an agreement with AMS to at least be there till the end of June. Um, and in that meeting, we talked about, you know, maybe uh, pulling them out of there at the end of June. But uh, Michelle with Michelle Fry with ADM, um, she thought, well, you know, there's no sense in doing that all at once. So they're okay. going to continue to support us and help us. You know, we may reduce it by a couple of trailers. Right now, there's five trailers out there uh, that are injecting twice. Each trailer injects uh, microbes into the lagoons twice a day. And so maybe in June, we'll cut that back to half of that, you know, or three anyway. Uh, but everything's going really well. Um, you know, the it's the aspects of the lagoons that, you know, you see, you smell, you know, mm -hmm. and, and things like that. And, and, you know, the birds are back, uh, ducks and geese. And so those are good signs, you know, yeah. okay. that, that it's a healthy system. So. Okay. Well, we appreciate you and your team's hard work and getting yeah. rid of the smell monster and working with ADM and yeah. AMS and with Brad. And uh, sounds like we're getting a lot of imported necessary items replaced, right. both at the water treatment plant and the wastewater plant. Yes, sir. Thank you, Scott. All right. Thank, thank you. you, Scott. Thanks, thank Scott. Have a good night. All right. Uh, consideration of addendum number two. Uh, Wastewater Evaluation and Design Contract, Project Number 21-303, Additional Consultant Services from Earls Engineering and Inspection. Uh, to finalize plans and bidding for the Davis Lift Station, Overflow Pump, and Force Main, $18,000. Jason? Uh, Commissioner Jett, thank you. That's a good segue from what Scott's talking about. It's all wastewater treatment plant stuff. So one of the, <laughs> talked about compliance issues, the last item on that list from a couple years back is the Davis lift station. When there's heavy rains, it tends to overflow. So the state has required the city to mitigate that. So we've been working on a pump, designing a pump to get that overflow into a force main and direct it into cell number two at the lagoons. So we've got the survey was done. We've got plans laid out. The last item that we are finishing is sizing that pump properly and getting the most efficient system that we can for that. And part of the original scope of that work, which goes back to 2021 when we started working with the city, we did an overall evaluation of the entire wastewater treatment plant based on KDHE's recommendations and what we see. And we've gotten through like almost all of that and part of those, the scope of those contracts Got some of them through design, but not all of them. And this was one of those that we didn't have it all the way through complete design. We had preliminaries uh, and then get it, getting it out to bid. So the efforts required to, to take that to the finish line is what this is for, essentially. Pending any questions. So you need $8,000 for the fourth and three play? The fourth. <laughs> That'd be nice. But, nope, just. Finish it out, just efforts, time for that. Okay. We have a motion to approve addendum number two. 
I haven't asked Brad, did you have anything you wanted to add to Jason? No, I don't. I'm good with this. You're good with it? Okay. Yep. <clears throat> you want to make a motion? Sure, we'll entertain a motion. <laughs> a motion we accept the amendment number two to the wastewater evaluation and design contract. I was, Project number 21-303. I was just sitting here motionless. <laughs> no. I'll second that. Dylan Olson? Yes. Melissa Guns? Yes. Tim Van Hookie? Yes. Matthew Wells? Yes. Tracy Dancer? Yes. All right. Don't go anywhere. Consideration of inspection proposal, Earls, Earls Engineering and Inspection, Inc., project number 22-049, Horton and 6th Streets, KDOT cost share project. We've got a, Jason, we've got an issue on this one. Yep. It says, uh, Mr. Matkin, this letter is written is a written contract between City of Pittsburgh. Oh, you wish they would pay for that. Yeah, it'd be great if, I mean, yeah. we could go ahead and motion that one and be done with it. Yeah, so I would recommend that would be amended, but yeah. I think, I don't know if, based on the bids, this, we can, part of the deal, when we started getting into more projects that needed inspection, uh, Brad had requested that we submit our inspection proposal when the bids happen, so that's why this is here, uh, but I think, I don't know if you want to wait and discuss the bid. Probably before we get into this and that I would say so. So yes. if you want a motion to table it to next meeting, that would be perfect. That way we sort out whatever we need to sort out and yeah, I'll I'd, correct that verbiage. I agree. Okay. I would move to table <laughs> item three, consideration of inspection proposal until our mm -hmm. next meeting on May seventh. Second. Sec mm -hmm. Melissa Gones? Yes. Tim Van Hookie? Yes. Matthew Wells? Yes. Dylan Olson? Yes. Tracy Dancer? Yes. All right. All right. Item 11B, four, consideration of bids, project number 22-049, Horton and 6th Streets, KDOT cost share project. Wait. So, yeah, this is the same project. Oh, yeah, yeah. This is okay. the bids. Yeah. That's the bids. bids okay. Contractors. Right. <clears throat> so we opened bids back back uh, last mm -hmm. Thursday. Uh, we had three bidders, and I think did the summary sheet get in your agenda? Yes. Okay. So that that lays out the the numbers. Uh, the low bidder was Heck and Wicker, and they were within 10% of the estimate. And part of that, I guess, historically, that project started conceptually and well, probably before 2021, because I think we we'd submitted. The fourth round with the city back probably the fall of 21, and it was selected by KDOT, which is, I think, your new agenda item. Um, so that goes back a ways, and over, over the stages of that design, we kept looking at the estimate, and as you all know, with the state of things, inflation and labor costs, so the numbers just kept going up. But So my final estimate was probably six months old by that time, but kind of the industry standard, if they're within 10%, that's acceptable as far as the bid goes, uh, but it's still up to you to review those numbers and, and make a decision. So I've seen forward. an additional document on here, Jason, for yeah. it's a minus $38,000, I believe, and that was for the uh, care of the brick pavers? Yep, so as an, as an option, you know, partly due to the cost, there's a, a way, if it's acceptable, to not worry about salvaging those bricks in the way that the policy has requested that. Uh, now, if we're if we're talking about scavenging those bricks and yeah. you know putting them in our in our brick pile out yeah. by the brush dump, so is part that of what the cost, about? right? So part of that street between uh, eighth and sixth is getting a full tear out. Yeah. So that's where we believe you could salvage some bricks and. Since we hadn't done it before on a bid, we wanted to give them an opportunity to tell us what they thought that would cost. And fortunately, Heck and Wickers was the lowest bid at 925 a square yard. And I, I think you have the bid tab in there as well. Yes, so if you look at 
the other bidders, there was quite a quite a difference. So, you know, you could say it would cost anywhere from forty thousand to one hundred and twenty-five thousand dollars to to take care of those bricks, and it was spelled out what was requested for them to, you know, if they run into bricks, try to salvage them, which means they got to be careful, uh, clean them, palletize them, and then coordinate with the city to deliver them to the brick stockpile. So there's a lot of parts to that. So that price of 925 is is really a good price, but it was an opportunity to drop that cost back down a little bit as well if you now, didn't require it. Would they be willing to take them and dump them over there and then we can have the prisoners clean them as we've done before? Yeah, we can ask them about yeah, they're going to have to haul them off clean anyway. Them, palletize them. Brad, what are your needed? thoughts on this? Yeah, with we've, this taken it to the, yeah. we've taken it to them before, element. and they've cleaned it for us for free. The yeah. prisoners, they actually enjoy doing it, and yeah. then we get clean palletized bricks. Do you know if cost to the city. any right. of these bids came in at the same time the brick requests went out, or if they came in before? Do you know how, how the bricks might have changed the prices overall? There is a, there's a chance that... The low bidder's number was so low because he was accounting for some of that cost somewhere else. Exactly. They That's all why got the same time frame and they all got the same information. So no That's why I'm asking, that. though, with if that's being removed, you know these guys have to have built additional cost in for that because right. how many jobs do they do where they're asked to pull, clean, palletize, and right. store bricks? So would it make sense... To put this out the bid again, or just because one guy pulled off that line item on there of thirty-eight thousand dollars to move forward. So I'd like yeah. to hear our city manager's suggestions or feedback on that. I talked to Jason beforehand, and he makes a good point. It could go either way. Um, with the quote being so much different, with the bid being so much different. It seems like to me they hid the cost somewhere else, but maybe they don't know how hard that actually is to uh, palletize clean bricks. I, I don't know. And with the it's, with with the other did I know that with the other bids that we were presented, there is always the chance that now the price will go up when we send it back out. Oh, I understand yeah. that, especially yeah, with I don't. the materials that have gone up. And yep. then we also lose the anticipated start date of June 17th. Yeah. And consider, there. you know, the next two bidders. Considerably were higher. 400,000 plus. I, I yeah. believe this so is the best bid. bid we're going to get, but yep. just so our only the ask two. of them on the bricks is going to be, and I'm good with Forget this, it. is to, where you can put them in a dump truck and take them down by the storage area by the Dollar brush pile and dump yep. them. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's if that. you want to pay the extra 40000 No, no. The, no, no, no. The 40000 was to clean them on yeah. site, palletize them, palletize them, wrap them, them in plastic, and deliver them to our yard oh, yeah. ready yep. to put back on the streets. This actually removes, what is it, 38000 and change yeah. from the bid. So the contract's not signed or anything. It hadn't been approved. So what we will do is if you want to go forward, we'd reach out and say we're getting, we want to amend the, the total. Yeah. Based on a new price to handle those bricks differently. Yep. Right. Which for these, yeah, for these guys, it may not be a lot, but no. that's up to them to to tell us. Did um, Ben have any comments on our budget? Yeah. You know, how how is this going to position us going over? expectations and going into next year i asked a few weeks ago mm -hmm. how is it going to position us for what coming down the line wall street um our cost share is substantial for this and uh, plus all the other projects we want to get done um, well some of the ones that we necessarily want to get done ourselves may have to go on the back burner but talk to ben talk to jessica and jessica you can chime in if you'd like um this may have to come from a couple different funds, street-related funds. Um, ben tells me that we're good, we're okay uh, with the cash that we have on hand. So we, we've got to get it done. It, it's, 
it's something that we have to get done one way or the other. Horton, Horton is bad. I mean, point blank bad. Um, the Wall Street, we don't have to do. That's going to be when twenty twenty five. Yeah, the earliest so date would be. In, we'll be in a whole different that, budget yeah. cycle then, okay. uh, so we'll be fine there too. And um, we had we had two hundred eighty thousand well, dollars that was supposed to have been used to mill and overlay Wall Street before we went out for the CLIP grants to begin with. Mm -hmm. And that money is still in there, which is well within the extra that we would have here. So we have that money that we already budgeted for the street, plus that additional money that we have to apply towards this that doesn't affect any of our budgetary. And we do have some streets. funds coming off that are actually from, from street funds that are in CDs. They'll be coming off after the first year. so. We'll have funding there. Jessica, do you have anything you want to mention? Um, nothing beyond what you already mentioned, Brad, that you covered it great. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Well, I would move to approve the low bid of Heck and Wicker Incorporated minus the uh, line 44 of the bid. I'd second. I'm sorry, who was second? Melissa Guns? Yes. Tim Van Hookie? Yes. Matthew Wells? Yes. Dylan Olson? Yes. Tracy Dancer? Yes. All right. Now we had an item five, correct? Yes. We're adding, and uh, Melissa, or Lisa, help me out because I didn't write down the number you you said. It was twenty. Yep. Say again. Two zero eight two two. Two zero eight two two. Okay. And that is uh, Brad. You got the info. You got kind of the background on that one, right? Not really. Not really. I'm trying to figure out where we're. At. <coughs> yeah, so oh, I can talk it. to a little is bit. The, yeah. So that's the cell, cell tower. tower? No. No. It's, it's the in here. It's well, the, the cost share, right? The cost share. Cost share. Yeah. So the main the main deal with that, you know, that was back in 2022. Okay. So we went through it. That talking about the budget from before. You know, we had to have a number when we submitted that for approval with KDOT. So they were selected. And at that time, so KDOT's share of that, of this project, yeah. Horton Street, is $949,000. So once the bid is done and approved, we send that to KDOT so that they are prepared to do reimbursable up to that 949000 So I think it, that yeah. agreement, it talks about that, and it has that number. And I've already, I've already talked to KDOT since the bid, so they're... They're happy it's ready to go and, and ready for that to move forward. I would motion that we approve the cost share agreement for Horton 280-22. <laughs> Second. There's no chance they want to give more money, right? I did ask. <laughs> I, I did ask that question. You actually did ask that. Because the bids were, were beyond, I said, you know, have you... And it kind of goes into this precedence thing. But they've actually kind of squeezed that program down. It used to be, there used to not be a cap. So the new cost shares are capped at a million dollars. So one of her responses to that question was, you know, we're, money's tight because there's so, many, so much need. So they're trying to spread it out more, and, and there's just no additional funds um, for this Before project. you vote, on page 15 of 17, under notices, does that need to be changed, the LPA from Kelly to me, or does it, is that not that big of a deal? Or? I can ask. I don't think it's going to matter. Okay. All right. I didn't want I didn't want the mayor and the city clerk to sign something, and that comes back to where we need to change it. I think it was simply because he was on it when we applied yeah. for it. Yeah. But I just <laughs> yeah. no, he's not here now. Okay. 
You're okay to sign that then with with that name on it? Or? I think it's up to you. If you want to wait, if I'll ask KDOT if they need that changed. I think it's more about, I don't know. Is that a signatory? No, it's about line? notices. Any notice required or okay. submitted under the agreement shall be deemed given I, and gotcha. mailed to. And so it'll come here to the city offices yeah. anyway at 123. You yeah. usually send me everything. So yeah. he knows who I am at least. So. Yeah. And I'll make sure that cost share coordinator, I think she already knows that, but I'll make sure. She does. Yeah, Michelle Needham's already sent me. Yeah. So I think it's already kind of handled. Yep. But. Good. Thank you. Okay. Did we vote? No. We haven't voted. No, we yet. haven't voted yet. Matthew Wells? Yes. Dylan Olson? Yes. Melissa Guns? Yes. Tim Van Hookie? Yes. JC Dancer? Yes. All right. Item 12, reports and comments. City Manager. Okay. Get my ducks in a row here. Um, first thing I'm going to do is try to wing through what Mary wanted me to do. She went to a uh, grant writing conference. Um, so what she wanted to talk about was the land bank uh, board member term date. We didn't change that yesterday, did we, Lisa? So this is good. <laughs> Okay. There, there was recommendations, but they ain't been brought forward you see yet. That? You might read that and see if it's okay for me to read. And I'll go through this stuff while you're reading that. Well, well they, they didn't want to do uh, a work session. Well, last to, night to we voted changes. to recommend changing the, for the profession, four professions mm -hmm. rather than be a three. I think there's two threes, a two year and a one year term just to allow them all to be three-year terms, keep all that wording. Um, also off ordinance 3599, remove the wording where the main support comes from Bourbon County Ready since we already use city support and Mr. Bishop is the main resource for the board. So I didn't feel that was necessary in the ordinance anymore myself. Um, and to... Well, then you wouldn't... And the appointments would be from the date of appointment of the individual to help stagger yes, them. not the first year. So then you're, you want to remove ready from the land bank? No. Requ a required they would retain their position. Okay. Because it there's, language in, that in the, there's yes. language in the ordinance where the main support yeah. of the board is through them, which is not how it happens anymore. But they would still have a member yes. of the board. Those were just recommendations last night that were voted and approved, which. Well, I think we have an Lisa ordinance for had, it, so we'll we would to need change. to see and change and vote on those changes. We'll change the ordinance and bring it to the next meeting. That would be best. Okay. A um, few items I've got, just some updates. Gun, po gun park shower house update. We do have everything inside of it. It's uh the inside is pretty much done. Um, so once we get water running to that hooked up, it'll be ready for usage. Um, fireworks, we did go ahead and sign somebody up to do our fireworks. The citywide fireworks uh, went for $12,000. Uh, it will be July the 6th out at the normal behind the college. So it's usually well attended. Um, work session, just a reminder, work session next Tuesday at 6 o'clock about the RID districts. Um, Garth will be here from Gilmore and Bell. Uh, if you haven't driven down Eddy Street, St. Mary's and Eddy, we have a water leak and line repair going on. It'll probably take a, another week to do that. The guys have been working on it all the last couple days, plus they worked on Saturday on it that line is uh, other terms toast it's something that we've we can't control it it's it's just one leak after another after another i would say it's one of the older lines in town so we're going to put a new line in in that area and see if we can get some of that to stop and also on 25th street update we poured today and hoping to pour tomorrow and then let it dry and we'll be done with that project um the guys have done a great job we've been fighting some you know some rains here and there um 
Plus, it was a little trickier than we thought, but the guys got it done really good because of all the traffic concerns. So we never shut down any of the uh, the businesses in that area. We I, I will give a shout out to Peerless for allowing us to go through their parking lot and also the traffic to go through their parking lot. I appreciate them for working with us, but that's uh, good news. Get that off our list. So that's all I got. Thank you. All right, Jason, engineering comments? I think really the only thing, you know, with that bid that came through, I'm going to start compiling a list of active projects so we can keep a better track of the budgets as they kind of change. Nothing ever gets cheaper, it seems. So uh, to help the finance folks and, and Brad and you guys see that better, uh, hopefully I'm going to come in Friday probably, if, sit down with Brad and mm -hmm. go through some of that. We're actually meeting with KDOT for phase three of Wall Street because we submitted for that next phase uh, of the C-Clip. So we're meeting on site, I think, Friday at 9. Uh, but yeah, so, so hopefully I'll have time between now and then to get some of that together and then work through the rest of it with Brad on Friday. And that's all I got, pending any questions. Thank you, Jason. Thanks. All right. Commissioner's comments. I think we'll go in alphabetical order this time uh, by first name. Dylan, you're up. No comments. No comments. Okay. Matthew? Um, first item, I just wanted to clarify something from the last commission meeting. It, from some research, it was found out that the damage that was caused to the ground that I referred to as the bottom land where the ground lease next to the wastewater was not in fact caused by the farmers and the way they mm -hmm. were disking it. It was in fact caused, am I correct, Brad, by the equipment that we were using yes. to rip the ground up. Yep. And so and the I, farmer has been talking oh. to Alec and they've, they're working it out. Yeah, they've got a so. good plan of action moving forward. I just wanted to, okay. to make sure that I personally apologized for any indication that I made that it was their responsibility when it, in fact, was the city's responsibility. So forgive me for that. Um, two, I've had a lot of people reach out to me. We, as the commission, have already voted to move forward with the RID package. I do believe, yes. Okay. Yeah. I mean, so they, were, they were asking. Well, the, the, we, the ones that were on there. Yeah. We moved yeah. forward with. Yeah. The options or the options presented, but we haven't established any actual district. Yeah, any district. no boundaries. No, no. We, yeah, we haven't. Right. But we we voted to approve those areas and to have to have the districts drawn Moving up and with have, considering have everything. Them as, okay. Right. Yeah. The re, the reason I ask that, and they're going to be here next Tuesday yes. for everyone's reminder. There have been several people who have reached out. Of course, I believe they've reached out to you as well. Mm -hmm. We have projects that are currently at a standstill because we're not moving forward yet on this RID. So I just want to encourage us to be as proactive as we can moving this process forward if everyone's in agreement, because we have several projects that will get done as soon as we get this thing passed. Per, so, per Garth, though, this is a slow process. Yes. Just yep. like minimum just of, like minimum of 60 to 90 this days. Other yep. Stuff that the government goes through. Yes, sir. It's, it's yep. a slow process. I just want to make sure that we are prepared to, to move on it as quickly as we can for the benefit of all of these investors who want to get these projects moving forward. Um, item number three um, was a question and about Third Street Park. M my understanding is that uh, when HBCAD and others did the improvements last year that the city was going to rehab those bathrooms. Mm -hmm. um, I do believe we have some of the stuff. I'll talk to Bill. Okay. I just wanted to know where we were on that and then whether or not and how soon we can no, get we're those. Uh, we'll put a lock on it and, you know, a, a timed lock. That's why we okay. put that's why we put Wi-Fi up there so yes, we sir. could have a, a timer on our doors awesome. so we can lock them. Nice. Okay. I've just ha had some people. I went over there and checked it out, and, of course, the bathrooms are locked right now because we're coming out of the winter, yeah. which is the main reason they're locked, and then just wanted to follow up on when we were getting that accomplished for them. Um, and then I had somebody ask about, with, with the damage that was done to the water line over there on Eddy, 
-hmm. and its correlation to right after all of that heavy truck travel was allowed to drive up and down Eddie no, while doing the construction. It's been leaking for months and just months. so we can yeah. clarify that for the yeah, citizens. It's been leaking for a long time. Yeah. It was not just and because of the heavy truck travel. It's actually not it's not all on Eddie. It goes it'd be going west into the alley and past. So yeah, it's not Yes sir. It's luckily water lines are deep. Yep. So They'll be okay. And then just wanted to remind everybody that uh, this weekend is a, a big weekend at the fort. We'll have the Civil War days going on. Um, there will be a cannon firing again for the first time in a long time. Uh, the crew has been trained and, and passed all their certifications, so we're looking forward to that. And then to remind everybody that evening at Memorial Auditorium, the Friends of the Fort will be holding a camp dance, so everyone dig out your finest old duds and, and come and do an old time waltz and Virginia reel. We'll have a, a caller and some music. It should be a wonderful time. And then as Bailey said earlier this evening, everyone who's available, the 22nd, it's just another opportunity for us to get together as a community, show everyone that we care. It's two hours of your life to really make a huge impact on our downtown. So I encourage each and every one of you who's available that evening, the 22nd from four to six, show up downtown. Let's try to get some stuff knocked out. Thank you all. God bless. God bless Fort Scott. All right, Jim. You oh wait, yeah, no, I, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm better, Melissa. I'm sorry. Sorry, Melissa. That's okay. sorry, Melissa. Still here. Yeah, I'm still here for another month or so. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't have anything. Okay. Now you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, yeah, just a couple of things. First of all, um, want to uh, thank everybody that came out and supported the fundraiser for. Um, Mary Queen of Angels Church School. St. Mary's is a very important school in our community. And uh, the people that were there and volunteers, they raised $110,000 for the school. Also, if you find yourself with nothing to do this Friday, I think there's still some openings to sign up uh, for the Ready on the Green Golf Tournament. And funding from that goes to local scholarships. So um, if you... Uh, you find yourself with nothing to do on Friday it starts at uh, sign in at 9 a.m. and tee off at 10 all right well um, just wanted to put a reminder out there for because the weather is turning nicer and people are starting to play golf um, see those golf carts running up and down the streets and uh, you know some of them running around without without tags so if you could, please stop in, get those things registered. Um, also, there was a, uh, an incident, uh, oh, I think it was, what was that uh, Sunday? It was a, uh, that, uh, that UTV Sunday, with a yes. red and blue siren, uh, red and blue lights and a siren, you know, barreling down uh, National, North, North on National. Um, you know, I, I didn't know what it was. I'd never seen it before. It had no markings on it. It was driven by a guy with a black T-shirt, and you know, I, I I contacted Brad, and I said, "Hey, is that ours? You know, is that is that Fort Scott Police Department?" And he said, "No." It, it, come to find out, it was owned by the by the Sheriff's Department, and they were responding uh, to an assistance call by Fort Scott Police Department um, for a situation that required a UTV to go off road. So, you know, if you hadn't ever seen it before, it was something to behold because it was a uh, like a, a Ozell two-seater four-wheel drive UTVs with a red and blue light on it and, and a siren, right? Our fire tearing off uh, north on National at about 50 miles an hour. Yeah. I mean, it was fast. Yeah, Bob you borrows know? that on Friday night sometimes. That's when I go gay dogging. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's me. <laughs> But yeah, if, if anybody saw it and they were wondering, I was wondering. Brad cleared it up for me, and uh, so that's it was it was legit. So, but, uh, um, Commissioner Dancer, you do make a valid point still, though, on the unlicensed ones that are out there, and and the underage operators. Someone's going to yeah. get hurt. 
I still see him crossing back and forth across 69 Highway. I'm telling you, it would be easy to yep. just put it, put somebody on a Sunday at the golf course and watch him drive in. If there's no permit, no flag, yep. a few tickets will get the word around. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Uh, I'm done with my comments. Uh, city attorney. Don't have a thing. Okay. You've done a good job tonight. Uh, we're not breaking into executive session, is that correct? Mm -hmm. Motion to adjourn. Second. All right. Dylan Olson? Yes. Melissa Guns? Yes. Matthew Wells? Yes. Tracy Dancer? Yes. Tim Van Hookie? Yes. All right.